So last time we finished up the heel of the sock. We did the entire short row heel. And now what we're going to talk about is knitting the foot of the sock and the toe and how to finish your sock. So we did the short row heel in the contrasting color and then you want to knit the foot of the sock in your main color. So I've already finished the almost the entire foot of the sock. So because we're putting stripes before we work the toe, okay, then you don't want to knit the entire length of the foot in your main color. You need to leave some room to work those stripes. So um, everyone's foot is a little bit different size, um, especially, you know, if you're knitting for a man or a woman. And so this part of the pattern is really going to depend on who you're knitting these socks for. So uh, one thing that I've done is I've traced um, the feet of everyone that I make socks for. So I've just traced feet <laughs> onto cardboard. And then this way, um, I have that person's foot length and foot width and all of that information on a piece of cardboard that I can use when I'm knitting socks. So um, you can see I've drawn various lines on here over the years. The cardboard is really the cardboard has really been through a lot. Um, but I've labeled each of these cutouts with whose foot it is. Um, and drawn some lines on there. And one of these lines um, I want you guys to pay attention to. So if you don't want the cardboard cut out, it's not a big deal. What you want to do is measure the recipient's foot from heel to toe. And you want to measure all the way to their longest toe, okay? Um, and once you have that measurement, what you're going to do is leave two inches for the toe of the sock. And then I've calculated we need 12 rows for our stripes, which when I measured my gauge is about an inch. So what you want to do is knit uh, the foot of the sock so that it's three inches short of fitting that person's foot, okay? And that's including the heel that we've worked. So the part of the reason I love using this cardboard cutout is that I can slip this sock onto the cardboard like so and so I can line up the heel right on the heel of the cardboard and I can flatten out my work okay now I like to pull it a little tight because over time wearing these socks you know things loosen up over time but I don't stretch it beyond its limits. I just make sure that when I'm measuring the length that I keep this kind of tight. So I've got the heel and the foot. The foot is now <laughs> knit to one inch before I'm going to work the toe. And again we want two inches for the toe and an extra inch for the stripe. So this is three inches short of what it needs to be in the end. Okay. So whether you're using the cardboard or you've got a measurement of the recipient's foot or whatever, whatever it is you want to do, make sure you knit, um, and this is measuring from the bottom of the heel, so right in the middle of the heel, okay? So measuring from the middle of the heel up to the end of your work, it should be three inches short of the total length you need. Okay. <laughs> so once you get there, uh, what we're going to do is work some stripes before we work the toe. Okay. So I've got my contrasting color right here. And these stripes are going to be kind of gradient style, if you will. Um, that they're not even stripes. So what we're going to do is work um, 
one round in the contrast, three in the main, two in contrast, two in main, then three in contrast, one in main, and then work the toe. Okay, so all this is written in the pattern that you can find on Ravelry, the D Hard House Sock Cal 2019 pattern, which is free on Ravelry. And at this point, while releasing this video, that pattern will be complete with all the information from start to finish. So um, in that pattern, I have written out all the details of these stripes, and in this video, we're just going to follow along with that pattern. So I am going to knit one round in my contrast color, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I finished the one round in the contrasting color. Just one round, that's it. I tuck the end in the inside of the sock. We'll weave that in later. And now what I'm going to do is three rounds in the main color. Three rounds. Just plain knitting, no purling. Three rounds in the main color. And I'll be back. Okay, so, so far we have one stripe in the contrasting color and then three rounds in the main color to make that stripe. Now what I'm going to do is increase the contrast color by one and decrease the main color by one. So what I'll have is two rounds in the contrast, two rounds in the main color. So instead of one and three, it'll be two and two. So I'll go ahead and do that and then check back in with you. So I'm going to work two rounds in the contrast, which is my gray, and then two rounds in the main color, which is the black. Okay, so we just did two rounds in the contrast and two rounds in the main, which means now we'll do three rounds in the contrast and one round in the main, and that We'll finish off the foot before we do the toe. So I'm going to work three rounds in contrast, one round in main, and then be right back. Okay, so all of the stripes are finished on the foot of the sock. So I just worked three rounds in the contrast color and one round in the main color. So what you should see is that with the contrast color, you're going from one round to two rounds to three rounds and with the main color you're going from three rounds to two rounds to one round so the idea is to transition out of the main color and into the contrast because on the toe of the sock we're going to work it in the contrast color so it'll look just like the heel so at this point we can break the yarn for our main color because we're finished with that and leave a few inches for you to weave that in later. And now we're going to finish off the sock in the contrast color. So I'll put that end inside the sock so I can weave that in later. Pull that a little tight. Okay. Now since I'm working this on two circular needles, uh, basically magic loop style, I have half the stitches on one needle, half the stitches on the other needle. So the top of the foot is on one half and the bottom of the foot is on the other half. So if you're working this using double pointed needles, um, either put in some stitch markers or rearrange your stitches around so that you know where you have the front stitches versus the back stitches, okay? Because when we decrease the toe, we're going to decrease at the beginning of the round and in the middle of the round. So um, at this point I would make sure to count out your stitches uh, if you're using double pointed needles and you don't already know where halfway through the round is I would put a stitch marker there or rearrange the stitches in some way. So I cast on what was it 64 stitches for this total sock so I have 32 stitches on the front, 32 stitches on the back. So what I'm going to do is in the contrast color. So on this first round for the heel, what I'm going to do is knit one stitch and then I'm going to work a decrease stitch and I want that decrease to slant to the left. 
So I'm going to work in SSK. So you slip knitwise, slip knitwise. Then stick your left hand needle back through those two stitches and knit them together. So that decrease will slant towards the left in towards the middle of the toe. And I'm going to knit across these front stitches until I have three stitches left on this needle. So three stitches before the middle of the round is where I'm going. And I'm going to work another decrease at that point. So. Okay, so I have three stitches remaining. I'm going to do another decrease using these two stitches, but this time I want the decrease to lean to the right in toward the middle of the toe, so I'll work a knit two together. So I'm just going to take these two stitches and work them as if they were one stitch, and then knit that last stitch. Okay, so I've decreased my number of stitches by two on the front of the sock, and then I'm going to work the exact same thing on the bottom of the sock. So I will knit one, slip, slip, knit, then knit across the bottom of the foot until there are three stitches left before the beginning of the round. Okay, now I'm going to knit these two stitches together and then knit the last stitch. So go in as if they were one stitch, knit them together, and then knit the last stitch. Now that last stitch is where we uh, broke that main yarn, so just tug on that end, bring that in. Okay, then I'm going to work what I call a rest row where I'm just going to knit all the way around. So we're not going to work decreases on every single round, we're going to work decreases on every other round. So all I'm gonna do now is just knit all the way around these stitches for a rest round. Okay, rest round is complete. I just knit all the way around. And now I'm just, I'm basically going to repeat those two rounds until I reach a certain number of stitches. So what I'm going to do is work a decrease round and then work a rest round. So I'm working another decrease round and then another rest round and I'll just keep repeating that over and over again. So I'll knit the first stitch. I will SSK, so slip, slip and then knit them together. Knit across the top of the foot until three stitches before the middle of the round. So those of you using stitch markers, you'll, you'll work three before that stitch marker. Those of you doing this magic loop, loop like I am, um, then there should only be three stitches left on the needle. So, here we go, three stitches left. So I will knit two together. Knit one. Do the same thing on the second half of the stitches. So I will knit one stitch. 
S S K, so slip, slip, and knit. Then knit across until three stitches are left before the beginning of the round. Okay, and then knit two together. That didn't work out. I'm having a hard time grabbing this strand. Okay, and then knit the last stitch. Okay, so that's the decrease round. And then I'll work a rest round, which has no decreases. You just knit around. So what you'll do is you'll repeat these two rounds until you have a total of 24 stitches on the needles. Okay, so I'm just knitting in my rest round. So I like to continue this until I have a total of 24 stitches on the needle, 12 on the front needle and 12 on the back needle. What matters is that you have the same number of stitches on the front needle versus the back needle because the way we're going to close the toe is using the Kitchener stitch. And to use the Kitchener stitch, you need the same number of stitches in the front as in the back. So if you find that you don't want your toe to be as deep or you want your toe to be deeper, um, you could work less rounds or more rounds, uh, whatever you're more comfortable with. But I've found that uh, I like to decrease down to 24 stitches total, 12 in front, 12 in back, and that seems to be the sweet spot for me. So that's what I'm going to be doing here. So again, I'm currently working on a rest round, which is just knit stitches all the way around. So I'm almost there. So every time you work a decrease round, you're decreasing four stitches. One here, one here, one here, and one here. And then on the rest round, you're not decreasing at all. You're keeping the same number of stitches. But uh, what this is going to do is lean in your stitches at a nice diagonal here. So I'm going to repeat decrease round, rest round, decrease round, rest round all the way until I get 24 stitches on my needles and then I'll come back to show you guys how to do the Kitchener stitch. Okay, so I finished the toe. You can see the SSK stitches leaning in towards the left and the knit two together stitches leaning toward the right and it just creates this really gorgeous uh, edge on both sides. And yeah, the toe is finished. I've got 12 stitches on my front needle, 12 stitches on the back needle, so 24 stitches total. Um, and I'm going to Kitchener stitch those together to close this toe. So yeah, just uh, take a moment because we're almost finished with this sock and it's super exciting. So what I need to do is cut this yarn and I like to have about maybe a foot to work with. Uh, that always ends up being too much yarn, um, but it makes it easier for me to work with it, which is all that matters. <laughs> um, so I've cut the yarn and I have my yarn needle here. So the eye on this needle is large enough for my yarn to go through it. And what we're going to do is Kitchener stitch. And this is probably my favorite part of the sock because it means I'm, <laughs> I'm really just one step away from finishing. So since I've used circular needles, I'm just pushing these stitches onto the um, 
needle tips. And if you're using double pointed needles at this point, you want to put the front stitches on one needle and the back stitches on the other. Because we're not knitting anymore, we're going to use the yarn needle to uh, join these stitches together across this gap here. So um, I've modified the Kitchener stitch just a little bit to try to eliminate some of those extra bits that hang out at the beginning and end of the Kitchener stitch. So I'm just going to show you that here. That's right. Okay. So you want the yarn coming from the back of the needle and we're going to start working at the front of the needle. So what I'm going to do is go into this first front stitch knitwise. So if I were to knit this with a knitting needle, I would catch the stitch this way. So I'm going to insert the yarn needle knitwise, so from left to right. I'm going to pull that yarn taut and I'm going to slide that stitch off the end of the needle. Then still on the front, but working in the next stitch, I'm going to go in purlwise. So if I were to purl this stitch with a knitting needle, I would insert the knitting needle this way. That's why we say purlwise, so from right to left. And pull the yarn taut, but leave that stitch on the needle. Now I'm going to go to the back needle. I'm going to insert purlwise. And when you pull on this yarn, you want to make sure you pull it so that it stays underneath these needles. You don't want it going over and in between and all that crazy stuff. So you want this loop of yarn to stay underneath both needles, going that way. And I am going to take this first stitch here off the needle now that I've done that. There we go. Still on that back needle. Now I'm going to go into this stitch knitwise. Again, you want the yarn to stay underneath these needles. So when I pull this through, I'll bring the loop over here so it's staying underneath the needles. And now I'm just going to repeat that process. So in the front, you go in knitwise, slip the stitch off the needle, purlwise, Keep that one on the needle. Now go to the back, purlwise, slip that off the needle, then right next to it, knitwise. And keep going across your needle this way. So knitwise, slip, purlwise, stay. Purlwise, Slip, knitwise, stay. So I'm often telling myself, knit, purl, purl, knit. Knit, purl, purl, knit. <laughs> and it helps me remember this Kitchener stitch. Okay, so I think the most tedious thing about this task is making sure that this yarn you're working with doesn't get wrapped all around your knitting needles. So just be very aware of where that yarn is going. You don't want it wrapping around the needles, making more stitches. Okay, so I'm just going to keep working across until I get to the last few stitches. Okay, so I have four stitches left, two on the front and two on the back. And here's where it's going to be a little bit different, is that, so I've finished the whole complete thing, my yarn's attached to that back stitch, okay? So what I'm going to do is go in knitwise, slip this stitch off the needle, purlwise, Purl in the back, or at least go in purl wise. Slip that stitch off the needle. Okay, then go in knit wise here. 
hand wrapped around me. There we go. So I only have these two stitches left on the needle, but I've already passed my yarn through both of these stitches, so I'm just gonna take my knitting needles out. I'm gonna pull the yarn tight. Okay. And then to weave in this end, I'm just gonna stick this through the sock towards the inside. And I like to go, okay, so you can see the yarn is coming out of these stitches here at the top. I like to go in between the stitches in that next row, right down here. And I stick the yarn needle through there. I'm trying to go, I can feel that it's going into the middle of the sock. I'm gonna turn my sock inside out and I'm going to reach my hand in here and I grab that yarn needle with my fingers. Okay, and I can pull this yarn through. There we go. And you can see that that toe is super clean, okay? But I'm hanging on to that yarn needle inside the sock. I'm gonna flip this sock inside out. And yes, there's all of our ends that we need to weave in, okay? But our yarn needle is attached to this end right here, okay? So now we flip the sock inside out. So this is the, the phase when I immediately weave in all my ends. That way I don't have to worry about it later. So I'll show you guys how I weave in ends. I don't know that it's necessarily the right way. I don't know that there is a right way. But uh, this is how I do it, and it seems to work for me. So uh, this is the, looks like the top of the sock. I like to weave in on the bottom uh, when I'm doing the toe. So I just have, I just go in all these pearl ridges. I just go down from the bottom and then from the top. And that's my dog having a, having a dream about chasing something. <laughs> and then down from the top and I just work across and then I'll once I get across this toe I'll go down to the next row or something and I'll work back across that way this is how I do it and I've never had a problem with my ends coming undone so I'll come down here then I'll do the same thing across, just pick the next ridge and go underneath it, okay? The, whole, the trick here is to just go under that one strand. You don't want it to pop through on the front of the sock and see that strand over there, so. I'm just going in these pearl ridges. I mean, you do not have to weave in the full six inches, okay? The whole reason for having a nice long tail to work with here is because you need some slack on your yarn needle here <laughs> in order to get your yarn needle in and to be able to pull the strand through so it's not that you need all six inches to weave in it's that you need six inches so that you have room to work with your yarn needle so notice I keep stretching and tugging at the work to make sure that when I'm weaving in this end I'm not accidentally scrunching up my sock 